Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. It's that time of the week where I go over my NFL predictions for this week, um, week 16. I'm doing it a day earlier since I'm going to be traveling tomorrow. Um, so obviously things could change by then uh, with over the next couple days. Um, that would affect my picks, but let's get started anyways. Uh, let's get started with Thursday night's football game tomorrow between the Saints and the Rams. Um, since both teams are 500, this game is really important. If the Saints lose, it kind of forces them to have to win the division to get in. In the playoffs, if the Rams lose, they're basically out, you know, unless 49ers rest a bunch of players week 18. Because um, if the 49ers are playing around week 18, then it means the, point, the Rams are probably out. Um, I know the Saints are um, have won two games in a row, and it looks like they're turning a corner. But I'm not buying into the Saints have figured things out quite yet. I think the Saints can make this an interesting game. Um, but I, I'm going to take the Rams and their high-powered offense to get the job done here. I have... Um, the Rams winning 30-24. to 24. Next, on Saturday, a couple of Saturday games, you get the Bengals versus the Steelers. For the Steelers, this is for all the purposes of an elimination game. Um, if they win, they're still alive. If they lose, they're out. Now, the Bengals are not coming into this game 100% with a couple star um, players out. You know, offensive defense, you know, most notably Jamar Chase. Um, so, I j so, maybe that could be a factor. But I just don't expect Steelers third string quarterback Mason Rudolph to get the job done. And the Bengals get the big win to keep themselves alive for the playoffs. I have Cincinnati win 16 to 9. Next, you get the Bills versus the Chargers. Um, this season, usually when the Bills look like they're about to get on the roll, the cat screwed up. I don't see that being the case in this game. Chargers are just too broken as a team, and maybe worst case scenario, Chargers make it a closer game than it should be. Since inter coaches in their first game um, play pretty well, but the Bills will get the win as the Bills continue. Um, their winning streak. I have them winning 28 to 9. Okay, now Sunday games on Christmas Eve. You got um, Browns versus Texans. Um, sources say Texans score I see Stroud was still likely not clear concussion protocol. If that's the case, then I'd like the Browns to continue their winning streak. I know back of case game with the comeback against the t Titans last week, but facing the Titans defense and the Browns defense is two different things. They won't let running back Devin Singletary beat them like the Titans did last week. I have Cleveland winning 27 13. <laughs> Next, you got the Commanders versus the Jets. In this game, we get the worst defense, the Commanders, versus the worst offense, Jets. Um, and the, I think it will come down to just quarterback Zach Wilson. He left the game with a concussion, and according to his mom, it was a more serious one to let on. So assuming he does not clear concussion protocol by game time, and they have to start Trevor Simeon, I think the Commanders can do enough on offense, whether it be Sam Howell or Jacoby Brissett starting a quarterback. And the Commanders get a win to finally break their five-game losing streak. I had winning 17-13. Next, you got the Seahawks versus the Titans. Um, this is a trap game for Seattle. Titans rookie quarterback Will Levis got hurt and might not play this game, which means veteran Ryan Tannehill gets a starting job back. Um, that's not a typical big drop-off from starting back up, uh, especially since the Titans are a run-heavy team. But the Seahawks, you know, they're just, you know, they have to travel East Coast for an early game time. They're just coming off a big high, you know, after beating um, the Eagles. So I can see them kind of just looking ahead, you know, kind of think about their playoff scenarios and kind of just overlooking the Titans. And the Titans are my underdog for this week to get a big upset um, to put the Seahawks playoff hopes in serious jeopardy. I have them winning in overtime 23-20. Next, you got the Colts versus the Falcons. Um, this is one of the hard games for me to predict. Um, the Falcons now have benched quarterback Desmond Ritter once again for Taylor Heineke, um, as they should. Um, the Falcons are in desperation mode. Um, since if they lose this game, they're not making the playoffs. I think this quarterback change for at least this week specifically can provide a good spark and the defense could take advantage of the offensive injuries um, that the Colts are, have going on right now and they can get a close win at home at the winning 24-23. Next, you get the Packers versus the Panthers. And the two Panthers wins this season, they won while not even scoring a touchdown. So I know the Packers were supposed to win the last two games and didn't, but I think this is a game they will finally actually win. As long as the offense can score just like 14 points, that'll be good enough. I have Green Bay winning 20 to 10. Next, you get the Lions versus the Vikings. Um, this is a low-key interesting game. Vikings quarterback Nick Mullins had high highs and low lows in his first start uh, since a few years, uh, in a, since a few years ago, uh, last week versus the Bengals. Uh, the question is, can he limit the mistakes and stick with the good things he did last week? Uh, if so, then I like the Vikings' chances. While the Lions played great last week, they are not as good of a team on the road, um, and I don't think the defense has suddenly fixed for issues. Uh, Vikings get the win to keep themselves alive for the playoffs. At the win 20 to 19. <laughs> Next, we get the Jaguars versus the Buccaneers. The battle for second best in Florida. 
you know, something that's debatable, but Miami's probably won. Um, I know the Jags are on a three-game loser streak. If quarterback Trevor Lawrence was not in concussion protocol, I could see them bouncing back since it's a very important game to keep their division lead. But I just don't trust backup C.J. Beathard to get the job done. Um, and therefore, I will take the Bucks to win this game. Although I do think it will be, um, you know, a, a good close game. But the Buccaneers win like 17-10. Next, you get the Cardinals versus the Bears. Some think that the jury has a verdict on Bears quarterback Justin Fields. Um, others think the verdict is still out and Fields has a few more games to prove his case on why he should remain starter going into next year. I think he will play a good game and give the Bears a win. Now, Arizona can make this a close game, and I think they will. But since Arizona secretly may want to talk to you pick, they would be fine with a competitive loss. So I have Chicago winning 28-20. Next, you got the Cowboys versus the Dolphins. This is a tough game to predict. There are multiple reasons why I like Dallas. One is when good teams get humiliated, they usually bounce back the next game. Also, the Dolphins' offensive line is not great. Um, so if the Dolphins are in a third and long situation, then the Cowboys' pass rush can do damage, especially against a stationary quarterback like Tua. Also, if star re receiver Tyreek Hill happens to be out again, that's even worse. Then there are reasons like Miami, though. As we know, Cowboys do not play well on the road. And then also, the Cowboys' rush defense, as I saw last week, you know, not good. Dolphins running back Ricky Mostert can easily, who's a very speedy running back, and easily take advantage of that. My head is telling me go Miami, but I'm going to go uh, with the Cowboys um, so they can still stay alive at a division title race. I'm going 27-24. Next, you get the Patriots versus the Broncos. Luckily for the Broncos, they get one of the easiest schedules remaining, and it starts with the Patriots. <laughs> they need to take care of business at home, and I think it'll be a close game for a while just because Denver's not elite offensively. Uh, but... Then the defense, but then the Broncos defense, unlike last week, um, will make a few key big plays uh, to get the Broncos a chance um, at the at the postseason. I have the winning seventeen to nine. Uh, now you got three Christmas games. The first one being Raiders versus Chiefs. Um, after coming off a great game against the Chargers and having extra time to prepare for this game, it would not shock me if the Raiders make things uh, interesting for at least the first half. I think in the second half, um, though, like the uh, like the last time they played against each other, um, the Chiefs will start to gain separation. The Chiefs get the big win to basically clinch the division. I have them winning 28-16. Next, you get the Giants versus the Eagles. Um, this is a game where the Eagles should win and break the three-game losing streak. However, since they have been struggling recently, I don't think it's just a one-week fix type of issue. So I think the Giants could make this a closer game than expected, meaning they can cover the spread. The Giants would love nothing more to be spoilers to the Eagles and their division hopes. Um, I have Philly winning 20-13. to 13. And then last but not least, the big game of the week, you got Ravens versus 49ers. Um, this, the, game of the, the game of the week with both um, teams are number one seeds in their respective conferences. And based on how things look, this could be a Super Bowl preview. I know the 49ers have been blowing out, you know, even good teams. Um, but I just don't see them blowing out the Ravens. Um, they haven't. The Ravens actually haven't been blown out all year, um, so I just don't see. And they're a good team on the rise. So I just don't see that happening. This would be an interesting game to see in a close situation. Is Brock Purdy um, going to step up? As long as all of his weapons are healthy, I think at home he can do that. Uh, Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson will do his best to be um, Superman against the 49ers defense, but I think he comes up just short. As the 49ers essentially secured the number one seed as the winning 24 to 20. So thank you very much for listening to my podcast. Please subscribe to my show, Johnny About Me. And just as a reminder, the college football bowl games are going on, and they've actually been, for the most part, pretty spectacular. Um, so continue to watch out for that as well as long as well, with the last couple weeks of the NFL season. And remember, you know, with Christmas coming up, there's also a bunch of you know nice NBA games as well. Um, thank you very much. You know, have a wonderful day and happy holidays.